are these people? We saw, as expected, an escalation this week on college campuses, and it is, were they infiltrators? I mean, it sure seems like it, because these were peaceful protests for the better part of a week. Some of them, surely. For a week plus. Uh, We're going to look at a bunch of them right now. I, I think people have gone through this, but Andrew, our friend Andrew Smith, he actually wrote something over that I pulled over at INN Stack. Um, I was going to read that. There's a lot tonight. Go check that out. We're going to look at, he's talking about this this uh, woman at Ole Miss and this, this idiots, man. I don't know if you saw this. I mean, this is not, I, mm. are these feds? Are these infiltrators? Now, he thinks that these are paid astroturfers and fed boy agent provocateurs. I think these are just, Mississippi dumbass Southern college boys, personally, but you, you probably a bit of both. Like, yeah, they're escorting her out, of course, counter protesting, and they're taking it's gross. Yep. Like what? What? Taking care of business. This is, by the way, an elected representative who's encouraging. Like, what did she do? Um. I understand it's peaceful protest, and they were just clearing her. She didn't like. She didn't like genocide. That's what she did. Well. Yeah, we we're seeing a lot of that um, now. This I saw this morning, Karina, and she's great over on on the the Substack. She found this. This is at University of Virginia. I'm I'm sorry, George Washington. Mm-hmm. Rudy Rockman. He does. He's done a um, a podcast. I've seen him. iOS sniper, right? Who's tried to debunk a lot of the stuff online and he's he's one of their propagandists but they expelled him who took part in he took right part in the ground invasion into Khan Yunus and I don't know what he was doing showing up there but they they would not they were not having it they tossed him out that was at George Washington yeah. this was at University of Virginia VSP forcing protesters away from the encampment with pepper spray and tear gas. Lots of physical altercation. So she broke through the line. She's like a teacher. Like, what the fuck? Okay, what? Well, why are all these now? They're all standing there because the cops are there. They were not like that. Yeah. We had from popular resistance through the People's Dispatch uh, says hundreds arrested in God's of solidarity encampments. This was the other day, May second. Police were deployed to violently crack down on Gaza solidarity encampments erected by students at dozens of universities to demand that they divest from Israel. No, right? So, and Danny Haifong's in here. Shout out to Danny. I believe he's live right now. Hundreds of students, professors, community uh, members were beaten and arrested by officers on the night of April 30th. The crackdown and mass arrest at Columbia and City College ordered by university admins were carried out to clear and evict Gaza, Gaza solidarity encampments, which have been launched by students at dozens of campuses across the country in the last two weeks. I would say that's over a hundred now. I saw a list somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah. Danny says if this were China, Western media would be screaming about authoritarianism and clamoring for sanctions or military intervention. But this isn't Columbia. It's well, uh, this isn't China. It's Columbia U. Look at the show of force they brought in. It was like 16, somebody said something about 16,000 cops. 
That's insane. Yeah, Angel, shout out, calling it an invading force. And he, he may very well be correct, right? So, right, legal observers, and we got this is Eric Adams' night of terror. Nobody likes the New York City mayor, um, right or quote unquote left. The only people that seem to are the authoritarian left and the donor left. And of course, the Israel lobby. Um, but legal observers have estimated that several hundred people were arrested in the coordinated crackdown in the city. They weren't even releasing how many people they were arresting. Hundreds of cops were deployed to the two universities in uptown Manhattan, where cities had, where students had maintained Gaza solidarity encampments. That looked like a lot more than hundreds right there marching alone. That couldn't have been all of them. Crackdown was launched less than a day after Columbia students had occupied a building on campus, Hamilton Hall, and renamed it Hind, Hind Hall after the Gazan child murdered by Israeli forces after calling for help. They literally have her on the phone calling and talking to the operators, saying that they she, she was in, a, in an ambulance, they've already killed the driver and the other person in the ambulance, can you please help me? And I believe they shot her. So, okay. yeah, students had declared the building was in response to the occupation was in response to the administration's refusal to engage in good faith negotiations, citing their threats of deploying police and National Guard, and finally declaring that they would not divest from Israel. So there's no conversation, just no. Mm. We know why. Uh, there's been a lot of reports about how far back Colombia supports the imperial state. Following the occupation, the administration announced those participating would be expelled, while dozens of students proceeded to, arbit to be arbitrarily suspended, and the campus went into complete lockdown. And terror lockdowns, climate lockdowns, um, virus lockdowns, they're trying to find a way to lock people down, and I don't think they're looking to find it, but they're trying to get control back of, what's, uh, of their university and get the students to get in line. They have a legitimate beef and gripe. They're like, look, we're spending $60,000 a year each here. So finally, on the night of April 30th, police invasion appeared imminent as hundreds of officers with zip ties gathered outside the university. Actually, shout out to Max Sarge, because he was in our comments that morning saying they were talking about going in at 10 p.m. that night. And sure enough, 9.57, Jesse and I were getting ready to go live. We're like, oh, they're going in. They're breaking it up. That was last. That was Tuesday night. Watch American Tradition episode forty. By mm -hmm. the way, that was a lot of fun from Tuesday, right? Um, it says around nine p.m. They 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 violently pushed through a line of protesters outside the gates around nine, arresting dozens. Then proceeded to storm the campus using a tank and ladder to access the second floor of the building, secured by student secured, secured and occupied by students. Yeah, they couldn't get into the, uh, of course, the, you know, they had the, the doors barricaded. There was only one way in and out. People were were upset and saying that they were violating the fire code. Eyewitnesses recount mm. that dozens of officers entered the hall, brutalized those inside, and arrested them. No surprise. They were dying to do that, we know. A complete lockdown was also declared across the campus, and students, faculty, and workers alike were barricaded in buildings by police officers under threat of arrest. Isn't that nice? It is nice. Right? At the same time... This is the okay. nicest. Right. Hundreds of police officers surrounded City College, barricading students and workers at City College inside and threatening them with arrest, arrest after students and community defended the perimeter of the university for several hours. Cops proceeded to storm the gates, armed with pepper spray and batons, and violently evict and arrest hundreds. Remember who's being violent here. It's not the students. It's the police who are escalating with violence. They're trying to, to evict these kids who have legitimate cri gripe. Um, they should allow people to pass through and to have access, but all those people are trying to do is mess up their encampment. So I understand why 
they would want to stop people from doing that. Now they have over 400 arrestees for the two universities were taken to one police plaza for processing while hundreds were of people rallied outside. Students and people across New York City have vowed that the heavy repression doled out by the mayor's police force will not deter them from fighting for Palestine and are hitting the streets again on May 1st in a mass march for International Workers' Day. All right, there's Don Tiger, um, Columbia speech. Yeah, that was Rashid Khalidi gave, gave a speech. Right here you go. The Adams is, is going to the anti antiseptic line. Outside agitators, right? They're attempting right. to disrupt our city. But we know a little bit more about that now, don't we? Uh, and we're going to talk about that in a yep. second. Because the gray zone, shout out to, to Max and, and to Wyatt Reed for figuring out another piece of the puzzle or whoever they got it from. But they published this last week or this week also. But on the other side of the country at UCLA, dozens of Zionist counter-protesters launched unprecedented violent attacks against the students in the Gaza Solidarity encampment. They shot fireworks at students, beat them with pieces of wood, punched and kicked them, shouted obscenities and inflicted hours of terror on the hundreds of students and community members that are participating in the Gaza Solidarity encampment at UCLA. Despite the trigger-happy response against students, police barely intervened. Ha, huh, how about that? And dozens of students were seriously injured. Go figure. No way. As we know, over the past two weeks, thousands of students have been pitching tents on campuses. Not necessarily, you know, look, they're Walmart tents. They're not being supplied by an organization. Right. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing that I've seen circling around. They're being paid for by George Soros. Well, Me meanwhile, there's active GoFundMes for counter protesting. Like up right now with forty thousand dollars. I saw it was like, fifty two thousand last I saw. Right, but right, it's like in, every every fucking you know accusation is a confession. Right, students have now inspired like, students from across the world who have now also organized encampments at universities in Australia, Canada, France, the UK, Lebanon, Tunisia, and more. Um, Kathy Vogan over at Consortium News went down to an Australian one. She interviewed. It's like, no police. Administration's totally cool with us doing this. Like, they understand. They're permitting it. Everybody gets it. Yeah. Unlike what happened <laughs> over at uh, Columbia. Well, before we do that, let's let's take a pause for a second. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. What's up? Um, yeah. Um, cops are not, not fun. We do, we do not like the ones that go and beat up there's a, students. There's that, a saying about cops. Yeah. About how all of them are something. I can't remember how. What? All of them 40% or mm. something? What? No. Oh, I'm, I'm mixing them up. Something Sorry. 40%. Sorry, 40%. Um, oh, okay. So Anna Mayer says that, that, that they're never going to be able to, to drag her out. Um, where are all the boomers who protested Vietnam? Um, they're sitting inside the encampments and they're fighting to protect the students is what's happening, Anna Mayers. Never going to lock my ass down, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Um, Dave Burt's over on, on the Rockfin also. I mean, we knew it was coming from the observation in the streets, the law of police. Yes, we did. Both sides getting set up by the Fed so cops can get more overtime, industry standards, and civil rights era. COINTEL, bro. Not just COINTEL, but also so that they can shape the narrative that these are violent protests when they haven't been. Right? Yeah. And that way, that excuses... The only violence I've seen is armed groups of fucking Cops. Zionist like, right. kids. Right. You know, and infiltrators and whatever. Mm -hmm. The ones so, that show up with, with the, you know. the skunk that you're already that seeing like narrative control over it where it's like you know there's been multiple tweets about like you know the cops should just shoot these kids and get it over with and whatever and it's like you know i i thought this was america i you know where's those kids like second amendment rights like would you be okay with that would you be okay with 
them defending themselves? Do they have the right to defend themselves? Right. Like, you know, that shit goes both ways, homie. So. No, it doesn't. That's the thing. It only goes, know, it only goes one way. And right. That's, yeah. That's always how yeah, it kind It's of only works. allowed to escalate. Yep. One side of these. So. Uh, all right, so let's go to this gray zone article that I brought. Uh, some of you may have seen this already. I, it's been covered in a couple of places, but Columbia crackdown was led by a university professor who was doubling as a NYPD spook. Um, mm. But it only gets worse. Rebecca Weiner is a Columbia University professor who also serves as the intelligence director for, of the NYPD. Mayor Eric Adams credits her with spying on the anti-genocide student protesters and, <laughs> and directing the militarized raid that dislodged them from campus. That's where she also studied. Uh, if you two uh, guess. Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Weiner, where did she study? Yes. Um, I'm a bet Yale, Columbia, one of those Ivy League. Well, also somewhere overseas, Yale. but... The violent crackdown carried oh, out on... Oh, has... Uh, Hotel Hasbara. Maybe. That, that place. Yes. The violent Ooh. crackdown carried out a Columbia student on Columbia students protesting Israel's genocidal assault on the Gaza Strip was led by a member of the school's own faculty, New York City Mayor Eric Adams has declared. That surprise. During a May 1st press conference, just hours after the New York, New York Police Department arrested nearly 300 people on university grounds, now according to... Um, um, People's Dispatch was over 400 between City College. Adams praised adjunct Columbia professor Rebecca Weiner, who moonlights as the head of the Weiner. NYPD Counterterrorism Bureau for giving police the green light to clear out anti-genocide students by force. Quote, she was the Ooh. one monitoring the situation, adding that the crackdown was carried out after she was able to, her team was able to, conduct an investigation. So it's not even just her She's got a, a, a team of spooks inside Columbia. Oh, here's her getting Perfect. congratulated. Recently appointed, when she was recently appointed the Deputy Commissioner for Intel and Counterterrorism for NYPD. That was in July. Congratulations on being the world's biggest bitch. Well, I think that people inside Columbia would agree. Right, so on April 30th, dozens of people and dozens of cops in riot gear descended on Columbia's Hamilton Hall after students seized the building earlier in the day, citing a request from the admin. Several hours later, officers used a heavily armored NYPD Bearcat vehicle to enter the building through the window on the second floor and arrested those inside, while another team swept up members of the encampment outside. So that was two yep. weeks. Starting on April 17th, students of Columbia escalated their ongoing protest against Israel's genocidal assault on the besieged Gaza Strip. Also on the West Bank, but mostly on the Gaza Strip. They encamped on school grounds, stating their refusal to leave until the university fully divested from its Israeli-related re investments. That protest model has since spread to over 100 other universities in the U.S. and even been taken up abroad with similar actions like we saw it. Leeds University in the Soborn in Paris, in Australia, and others. Just a few hundred meters from the Gaza protest encampment, Wiener maintained an office at Columbia School of International and Public Affairs. Her SIP of bio describes her as an adjunct associate professor, professor of international and public affairs who simultaneously serves as the civilian executive in charge of the NYPD's Intelligence and Counterterrorism Bureau. How does one get that job? Mm. In that role, according to um, Simba, nepotism, right? Wiener develops policy and strategic priorities for the Intelligence mm -hmm. and Counterterrorism Bureau and publicly represents the NYPD in matters involving counterterrorism and intelligence. So she's a PR person and a strategy person. Sure. The, the yeah. NYPD's Counterterrorism Bureau currently maintains an office in Tel Aviv where it coordinates with Israel's security apparatus and maintains a department liaison, Wiener appears to serve as a bridge between the Bureau's offices in Israel and New York. That's how she got the gig. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's part of it. So the NYPD liaison has sent hourly updates to NYPD headquarters in lower Manhattan since the Hamas attacks in Israel per NYPD deputy commissioner. Hourly updates. Okay. And why not, why not like every five minutes, you know? I mean, I feel like they're slacking. Right. Yeah, being lazy. Um, a 2011 AP investigation revealed that a so-called demographics unit operated secretly within the NYPD's Counterterrorism and Intelligence Bureau. What a surprise. Yeah. This shadowy outfit. Otherwise. But she got me on the counter. Um, where's the other half? It wasn't me. Um, this, wasn't me. Thank you. This shadowy outlet spied on Muslims <laughs> around the New York City area. Yeah, I couldn't. couldn't it was like I'm sailing away. You know, I can't. Go without finishing. Um, even on students, <laughs> right, they're, they're even spying on students at campuses outside the state who were involved in Palestine solidarity activism. They followed them apparently to Rutgers University, is one of the places. It was developed in tandem with the CIA, which has refused to name the former Middle East station chief it posted the senior in the senior ranks of the NYPD's intelligence division. Yeah. So now you've got. <laughs> NYPD, Columbia University, Tel Aviv, and the CIA. Yep. No issue here. The demographics unit. No. <laughs> that's funny. Appears to have been inspired by Israeli intelligence as well. Not really funny. Uh, as a former police official told the AP, the unit attempted to map the city's human terrain through a program modeled in part of how on how Israeli authorities operate in the West Bank, which is interesting. Mapping the city's human terrain. I believe that's what the Lebanese threw Israeli spies out of their country for in December. We reported on that earlier this year. Dude, are, you, are you kidding me? That's what that's what Morgan Freeman didn't want to do in that Batman movie. You know? Like um, being Morgan able to fucking Freeman. Yes. Uh Morgan um, Freeman. Um Yeah, this is AI dystopian shit. We need to model the city's human terrain. What even is that? What is the what is human terrain? Yes, human terrain is where like, people will go. <laughs> Everywhere people can possibly inhabit. Um But like it or is it like the terrain, I don't know. That that phrasing is weird. That could be a lot of shit. Right. Human terrain is a pretty broad thing. Right. That could be how you, you know, go around the city, let alone not just, like, the topographic information. Well, you know. So I asked how somebody gets so, this job, and it's funny that you say what so you said. So I asked. I asked him. You asked him. A lawyer by training. So again, she's not a spy. She's a lawyer by training. She oversaw negotiations mm. between the NYPD and lawyers for local Muslims who had their civil liberties violated by its demographics unit. So she's been around for a while. Um, that was again in 2011. Right. And it was modeled in part. So she was already, she was probably instrumental in coordinating that, that type of training. So you asked again is, how, how does she get? I asked how she gets this job. You said nepotism. Wiener is the granddaughter of Stanislav yeah. Ulam, the Polish Jewish oh, mathematician course. who helped conceive the H bomb as part of the Manhattan Project. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's that's not, I mean, sure. She says, I'm very. Proof, timeline, screenshots, fucking everything. All right. Like, I'm very proud of that legacy, oh. she says, of course. So. You're, wait, 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 Go wait. Ahead. You're proud of one of the people that helped invent the hydrogen bomb. That's what you're proud of? The well, killing of innocents to the tune of fucking... It is her grandfather. Millions or whatever. Yes, and... <laughs> I'd be like, nah, fuck that. That dude was a bitch. Right. I don't care what fucking granddaddy, like... You know... Like... Um, <laughs> fucking... Oppenheimer's a fucking family movie for her. 
So what Max and, and Wyatt are saying here is that uh, during the NYPD's trium triumphant May 1st post-raid press conference, he blamed outside agitators for triggering the military-style police crackdown at Columbia. Mm. However, she refused to name the outsiders supposedly on scene. No surprise. Because the outsiders belong to her or somebody she probably coordinated with. Allegedly. Well, allegedly. What? Why? Wyatt probably thinks that, you know, Oliver Anthony will fix the problem. Oh, come on. So. Come on, man. Come on, man. According to Wiener, <laughs> the police response was not, was not necessitated by any criminal behavior, but by the radical language and symbols of the students. Goodness, Karen. Give radical. me a fucking break. This is not totally about radical. students suppressing ideas, expressing ideas, she claimed. The real problem was the alleged change in tactics by protesters, which she said represented a normalization and mainstreaming of rhetoric associated with terrorism. Yeah, that's a that's a phrase called from the river to the sea. Scares her. All right. Just use it. Let me tell you right oh. now. With when it comes to Zionists, just using the word Palestine triggers them. They they wince. They can't even hear the word. All right, here's a Michael Tracy thing, putting a video about uh, blaming TikTok and saying that no no question, this is recasting political speech as terrorism. That's what she's been trying to do. We've been seeing this crackdown and rebranding of political speech, speech as violence. Shit. AOC tried pulling that shit on Jimmy Dore how many years ago? Violence. A long time ago. 2020, I believe. Words are violence. Words are violence. Proof of this dynamic can be seen in what she claimed was the common trend of wearing headbands associated with foreign terrorist organizations, let alone the fact that your people were going to dox them and try to get them thrown off a school, thrown out of school. Yeah. The reissuing of Osama bin Laden's 2002 letter to America, which had a lot of interesting points, like it or not. <laughs> you know, you, you can wait. So wait, it they just have to bury it forever. Like, you can't give any yeah. credit to anything that was in there whatsoever. Okay. Of course, that's TikTok. And, of course, a brief visit to Colombia by Nala al Arian, who Wiener incorrectly described as the wife of someone who had been convicted for material support to terrorism. No, she wasn't. Absolute oh. lied spear job. Is that's... That that's not somebody who I would want necessarily influencing my child if I were a parent of somebody at Columbia. But you're not. You're not. It wasn't your call to make. You just were judge, jury, and executioner for hundreds of students that had already made decisions and been camping out for two fucking weeks. Huge, huge stones. Like, wow. Right? Nala's husband, Palestinian academic Sami al Aryan, had been in, in, indicted on flimsy terrorism charges in 2003, but a jury refused to convict him. Nevertheless, her brief stop at the Columbia encampment, where she says she did not even interact with any demonstrators, was cited by Adams during three separate media engagements to justify the police repression. Why? Because they needed their narrative. They got it. Didn't matter if it was true. And this woman, Rebecca Weiner, was one of the main perpetrators of that narrative. Here, CNN's Laura Coach just smeared Sami al Arian, whose wife apparently visited the encampment a few days ago, as a convicted terrorist. This is a malicious lie. He was never convicted. This is what Israel does. They lie. Then they say, oh, well, ah, come on, that's, that's a technicality. Ah, come on. Days after the story's already been out there, but when it mattered, the lie is what made it to most of the people, and they know that. And a lot fewer people ever end up hearing the truth. It's garbage. Mm. I'm not going to play the video. Check this out. <laughs> it's in the gray zone. All these links yeah. are going to be in the description afterwards, uh, or at least in the sub stack. This is going to be so long, I won't even be able to fit all these links in, in YouTube description. Throughout the press conference, Mayor Adams repeatedly cast the city's crackdown on student speech as the only possible solution to ongoing campus encampments, citing undefined threats to the minds of impressionable youth. God forbid they I mean, actually... He thought about mustard gas, but he figured he couldn't do that. Well, so, I mean, the Israelis the have been using white phosphorus. 
They've been using right. white phosphorus and they've been using tear gas and, and uh, pepper spray. So why not? This is, there is a movement yeah. to radicalize young people and I'm not going to wait until it's done. And all of a sudden acknowledge the existence of it. Guess what, pal? You're the part of the, you're the reason why they're radicalized. They're radicalizing against you. Yeah. You fucking clown. Yeah. Young people are being influenced by those who are professionals at radicalizing our children. Yeah, by beating them up on the streets and arresting 97% uh -huh. of the black ones. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. People of color, you know, as far as drug stuff, getting arrested a large percentage higher than anyone else. Not that I'm hoping that we do. They should drop all the drug crimes. I'm not going to allow that to happen as mayor of New York City. I don't think he's going to be mayor for much longer. Um, yeah. He's definitely in his last term now. After angrily pro proclaiming that his uncle died defending this country, mm -hmm. it's despicable. I don't that stand for that. It's despicable that schools will allow another country's despicable. flag to fly in our country. But wait a minute. It's despicable. Um, something wrong with this picture? I um, thought he said he wasn't going to allow people to fly another flag in our country. Mm. Here's your sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. that's, that, that's Rebecca. Hmm. That's what we're up against, guys, is is Zionists like that, okay? And people like this. Not, not Chris Legion. Follow Chris Legion. That's our brother. We're going to read one of his articles later. A group of pro-Israel... Is Israel, or as he says, agitators who assaulted ACLU students have been identified as a private security team associated with Zionist groups and who have, been work who have a working connection to the LAPD. So the agent provocateur is not the conspiracy theory that media told us it was. And he includes tweet, which is this piece of shit right here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's watch this asshole for a minute 46, talk about what he's doing. What's up, guys? Aaron Cohen here, uh, counterterrorism uh, analyst. What's up, guys? Uh, Counterterror, I played Counter-Strike for eight uh, years. I'm down here at UCLA right now. Law and, enforcement uh, instructor. Uh, cops. Have the opportunity along with Steven to, uh, Siegel. Uh, to spend a minute here with LASD, uh, some of my associates. I spent and I a minute. Take a minute right now uh, uh, to make it very clear that uh, uh, this these guys here, this is one of the finest. This is the largest sheriff's office in the country, right here. Uh, special the finest, largest, field, tremendous team, sheriff's MSRP office down here. Uh, you've got a uh, uh, some great law enforcement. I love them. The finest trained uh, boots, individuals, not delicious. just in the city of Los Angeles, uh, but in the country. Uh, uh, sheriff's office around the country, they the follow the LA country. County Sheriff. Uh, you can see behind me, there's a little bit of staging going on. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of the staging, uh, uh, just to keep everything nice no. and sterile as operations here are ongoing. But uh, I just want to take it's a minute, let you guys know, down here with LASD, and uh, no, this, nobody's uh, you know, talking to him. Nobody's to interacting with him. Whatever needs Nobody to be gives done a fuck to about get this, this situation guy. Uh, diffused safely. No, um, and with the highest degree of selectivity. But again, LASD. Uh, the, so, this is the biggest sheriff's agency in the country. Some of the finest uh, uh, deputies that I've worked with, and uh, their capabilities, their tactics are incredible um, uh, for you know diffusing a, a situation like this that's happening on campus. Just want to say it's really important right now to support law enforcement. You know, these are the uh, these are the peacemakers out here, and these are the guys are going to be risking their life to go in Fuck and uh, uh, not only pull those protesters out uh, and protect the students, uh, but we we'll want to make sure these guys get home safely, also. Um, so yeah, uh, down here at UCLA, stand by. I'm going to bring you guys some more. They're not protecting oh, students. You, well, They're not guys, protecting Eric students. The students don't need your protection, dude. Oh, this is how he's protecting mm -hmm. the students. Last night, I teamed up with Dr. Phil to conduct a special independent investigation, <laughs> which involved infiltrating the pro-terror UCLA encampment. Stay tuned. Wait, remember remember, remember how there was a lot of Zionists complaining about people wearing masks and you know, not showing their faces? That's who this piece of shit is. He thinks is. thou doth 
protesteth too much. Anyway, continue. <laughs> so this piece of shit is an Israeli yeah. special operations vet. My guess is either 8200 or Shin Bet. A law yeah. enforcement trainer. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. Which is the reason why. No, he... that's probably not bullshit, honestly. Well, well, it, well no, what they probably do is they, they use that as the excuse to be able to send him here to be able to do his special operations. Yes. Uh huh. That's his yes. cover. Same thing they do with Brazilian specialists and all that. And then they fucking all intermingle and get fucking shud coons together. On um, camera, national law enforcement and counterterrorism <laughs> analyst. I can see Fox News just eating this guy up. Just oh, for him. sure. I can see CNN. Fucking Chudville like, right there. Very happy. They love this guy. Yeah, yeah, CNN too. We love the cops. All right. Uh, now, just a reminder from Colombia to Palestine, how the U.S. and Israeli police conspire to suppress us, but not just suppress us, but how their tactics make it over here. Again, this is the thing about the the violent raid. Many Palestinians have said that the videos reminded them of the Israeli occupation force's own violence against them across Palestine. This is not a coincidence. As we know, yep. the NYPD and the IDF have a history of collaborative programs and tactic sharing. One of several American-Israeli yep. police partnerships popularly called the Deadly Exchange is what it's called. Including Don't look into here. funding all those, all those cop cop cities don't look into who's funding those you know um right. the, deadly, the deadly exchange um, refers to exchange programs in which the united states law enforcement attend training expeditions in israel where they learn israeli military approaches to in intelligence gathering border control checkpoints and coordination with the media authoritarian <laughs> tactics across the board well because police are the ultimate authoritarians in our society these programs, which are standard and widespread across U.S. police, allow for exchange of tactics. Not, it's not really an exchange. It's more a one-way directive tac tactics uh, on repressive policing, yeah. including racial profiling. That actually goes both ways. Mass surveillance, deportation, and detention, and attacks on activists. Plenty of that to go around, I guess, on both sides. But two colonial institutions known for systemic racism, racism and using violence against civilians trained together, they end up further brutalizing oppressed communities. Go figure. In other words, Israeli tactics developed to oppress Palestinians under apartheid or replicated in the U.S. to police black and brown Americans are now being used to suppress dissent and punish protesters across U.S. universities. No surprise, from cop city to checkpoints in Palestine, the U.S. and Israel disguise oppression as quote-unquote security. JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace, and researching the American-Israeli Intelligence Alliance, the, the American-Israeli Alliance, published a comprehensive report concluding that the deadly exchange's main impacts on the U.S. are increased surveillance of civilians, increased racial profiling, and increased policing of protests, right? Here's one of the direct things that it led to was increased surveillance tactics in Atlanta. After returning from a police tour in Atlanta, the Atlanta police uh, in Israel, the Atlanta police department developed and installed a camera system meant to mimic the video surveillance system used against Palestinians in occupied Jerusalem. Isn't that nice. And I wonder if that, if that connects into lavender and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm sure it does. Where's daddy? Yeah. Go watch your daddy. Oh, who's daddy? Right. Uh, go, go watch. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely that. Go watch the INN definitely who's daddy. news segment about, about lavender and the AI program that Israel is using to target potential yeah. people that they're going to, they want to murder and their families. Last no, August, did. last August, Right about the time that Rebecca Wiener was hired, Mayor Eric Adams began to incorporate Israeli police drones to use used to terrorize uh, Palestinians into the NYPD. Yep. The drones were first used just two Wiener. weeks later to surveil Labor Day weekend backyard parties. Oh, I remember seeing those drones on the Labor Day parties, and people were like, "What?" and, and the parades. Who are these people? 
Yeah. Well, they find out with facial recognition on these drones. The deadly exchange leads to racial profiling, as we know. American policing has racist roots from forming slave patrols to enforcing Jim Crow laws to upholding systemic race, systemic violence against the black and indigenous people today. Yep. Racial profiling is rampant with black men 20% more likely to be stopped by police, twice as likely to be searched. It extends to black Americans being more likely to be arrested, imprisoned, and killed than their white counterparts. The pillar mm-hmm. of Israeli apartheid is the designation of Palestinians as inherently dangerous. In the midst of Israel's genocide in Gaza, it has cracked down on the West Bank, as we mentioned, where Israeli police, soldiers, and settlers have murdered at least 492 Palestinians, including 124 kids since October 7th. Again, how you know they're saying bring bring the kid bring them home. I believe there's less than a hundred Israeli hostages at this point. How about the four hundred and ninety? They said they didn't. Ca- they literally said they didn't care. Yeah, today I know. I like saw, they were I like, saw. we're gonna invade Rafa anyway. I saw that. Like, I mean, ugh. All right. U.S. and Israeli forces share a preventative philosophy to deter violence, which leads to racial profiling. Um. Their cooperation exacerbates the harm committed against communities seen as inherent security threats by virtue of their identity. Well, terrorists make uh, terrorists commit small police. crimes before they commit big ones, right? Traffic violations may indicate possible terrorism, which is garbage after his return from Israel. Yeah, okay, go 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 figure. Um, this is from at yeah. Let's Talk Palestine on Twitter. Uh, it was shared by Zafreen Rahman over on Substack Notes. Thank you for that. I saw this one shared on Twitter, and I had to grab it. I thought this was so good. This is from Jewish Currents, right? This this looks familiar because this is what's happening on every college campus in America, where the Zionist is draped in an Israeli flag saying, Palestine never existed, you fucking terrorist pieces of shit, while everyone is mm-hmm. standing in solidarity saying, to close, div- disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest, Right? And then, who's paying yeah. you animals? Soros, Iran, go get raped in Gaza, Hamas dogs. Like, we have people on camera saying exactly what? this. And they keep saying the same Why did you do the Scooby Doo voice with that? Well, it's not a Jew. Where was Gooey? Well, because it, it's going to fit right now. <laughs> it's not a Jew. With you. No, like, zoning Scoops. Right. Bank Jew traitor, enjoy the gas chamber, token rat. Say Heil Hitler, you fucking capo. Say it. Like right. Zoink Scoops, that's antiseptic. Wait, wait, they did I didn't see self-hating Jew. Oh, come on. This is uh gave you a, a Jewish currents. Come on. It, it's also self-hating. I mean, uh-huh. we missed that. And they're all still saying the same thing. Very they're, self-hating. And they're ha- yeah, smiling the whole time. Take off your mask, give me your names, you'll never get a job again. Baby killing rape scum. And then they wonder why they don't You'll want to You'll never their... work in this town. Right? Can't wait till National Guard sprays. Somebody says, will you please just shut up and leave already? This just in, a blood-curdling hate crime protesters told a Jewish student to leave campus. Many are asking, are Meanwhile, American Jews are American Jews no longer safe in higher education? Fucking brilliant. Yep. Absolutely brilliant. And sad, but true. No DMCA for that, please. Yep. But, but we did get hit for doing Metallica once. I mean, I just figured you'd, I just figured you'd call this segment. Ask me about my wiener. Well, we just might. <laughs> that's Jonah yeah. Hill. I love it. That's Jonah Hill. <laughs> hey, ask me about my wiener. I love that. That that movie is, yep. is underrated. It's terrible, but also underrated. Lewis Black, right? Yes, Lewis Black. Okay, okay. Ricky Very from um, uh, anti, Anti-Imperialist News. As you go to class Not today, remember that voice. there are no universities left in Gaza. Why? Ask yourself why. Uh, about 200 tons of American high explosives. Now, this is a seven and a half minute video. I've played some Ian Carroll before. I'm going to play the first minute of it because I think it's really important. And it also 
is talking about the anti-Semitism bill. It talks a little bit about TikTok. And I'll drop well, first this of all, post. though, yes. if you're watching, we're going to have to talk about the mustache. We're going to you just need to fill the like, don't m mustaches are so 70s pedophile. You got to why it's just you got to move past the mustache. Come on, man. Come on. You know, L leave you in alone. Just, I just want to help him out. A, a top bun and a mustache is not the way. He's going for the samurai hey, look, yeah. bro. It's a samurai look. Samurai. Bro, they had they had beards, it's not to pass like, a law that's gonna outlaw you know, anti Semitic speech. Watch this. Which includes talking okay. about Israel. This is pretty wild. Check this out. It's called HR sixty ninety. Did you hear that did you hear that Congress is rushing what? to pass a law that's gonna outlaw anti Semitic speech? Yes. Which includes talking Semitic about speech. Israel. This is pretty wild. Check this out. It's called mm -hmm. HR sixty ninety. It just passed the House. It's basically expanding on and reclarifying the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to outlaw anything that meets the definition of anti-Semitism as laid out by the IHRA. This definition they adopted in 2016. And they specify that this includes the contemporary examples of anti-Semitism that we're about to look at. This bill is like specific to any government institutions or any institutions that get government nope. money, like universities. Pause real quick. So correct me if I'm wrong, but We've I'm got We've mm -hmm. got it passed the house, so now where does it go? Then it who will vote against that in the Senate? Nobody. Including Bernie Sanders. Bernie motherfucking Sanders. Why? Well. Why he would thinks, he vote yes on that? He thinks anti Semitism is bad too. Exact and he doesn't want the Israel lobby coming after him much either with that. So He's not running for a re-election again. I don't think he lot. much cares at this point what the Israel lobby is going to say, but... Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, sure. Says, anyway, you can get continue. Out of university now if you do any of these things. It's from the IHRA website. This is the one that was adopted in 2016. That was originally written as a non-legally binding working definition that is about to be legally binding. Here's the, some of those examples that they were talking about in the bill. Making mendacious, dehumanizing, Ugarous. demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews. Right on. I mean, like, let's not dehumanize. What do they mean by that? Such as, especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Uh, we'll come back to that. Accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interest of their own nation. We're looking at you, Anthony Blinken. Denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination, <laughs> e.g. by claiming that the state of Israel is illegitimate. Yeah, that's illegal now. I wonder why they'd have to make that illegal. Applying double standards by requiring... <laughs> you mean double standards like not requiring them to, uh, you know, listen to the International Court of Justice? Double standards like them not having to listen to the UN? Double standards like bombing civilians isn't a war crime? I mean, we would never want to apply double standards to Israel, obviously. I'm not going to read that one. Um, holding Jews collectively responsible for the actions <laughs> not of the gonna state read of Israel. That one. I mean, fair game. Lots of Jews are anti-Israel for great reason. But I couldn't help but notice that in the bill, there's the section at the bottom that says constitutional protection. Yeah. Nothing in this act shall be construed to diminish or infringe upon any right protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. Boom! Game okay. on, baby! So I figured I'd exercise a bit of that free speech in the First Amendment of the United States of America Constitution, of which I am a citizen, and point out that these are the only seven senators in the U.S. Senate that have not taken APAC money. 93 out of 100 senators in our government are taking money from the Israel lobby. You know, the one that brags about how they bribe all our politicians to keep Congress pro-Israel. Because, you know, when something's the right thing to do, you have to pay people to believe it. Otherwise, why would they believe it? And you have to ensure that any of those bad people that don't believe it don't get elected because they're bad. The single most influential big money group in democratic electoral politics. Because, you know, democratic electoral politics is all about big money. And using that big money to defeat all the bad people that don't love Israel. Like, take this one. Yeah, Nina Turner. Dude, that's really funny. He's pointing to Chantel Brown. Mm -hmm. 
because the a, the Israel yeah. lobby poured millions of dollars, over a million dollars, into their primary race mm -hmm. to make sure that Nina wasn't the candidate to begin with. Nina was never going to be the candidate to begin with. That's another story well, for another day. Problem. Again, this link will be in the description. There's a lot more good stuff here. Check out Ian. Cancel this clothing company. He's on Rumble. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. I think he's still on TikTok for as long as they keep him on, but they keep kicking him off. He'll be on OnlyFans. Uh, you know. Now, I, that, wanted, I wanted to bring a little anyway levity. to get your message out. I know this is running a little long, but we have a couple more things and then we can get to some other stuff. But I want to bring a little levity to this thing. Charlie G, we, we know. Uh, I enjoy it. I like it better than anything else. Help me, Jewish God! Help me, Allah! Notice me, senpai. Notice me. Please, Faye. Come on. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? Who are these people? Maybe I shouldn't put the music. Uh, but it is possible to not have that. So, um, who are these people? Uh, who are these people? Okay. <laughs> it's just a compilation of all of the wonderful behavior from all the Zionists that are interacting with the peaceful protests. And turning them not and it so says that song is Elephant Walk. I, I don't know if it's, yeah, I'm if sure NBC or somebody probably. Yeah, she said it's it. old. It's old. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's Charlie. Well, you're making, old. Yeah. I don't know about that. Even Zionists ah. not feeling safe doesn't seem to be a problem as they intimidate, harass, and even get quite violent at anti-genocide protests. Of course, then there's the. The girl who stood in, at Yale University in the middle of the courtyard with the <laughs> Jew <laughs> on one side and Israel on the other side written on her shirt and nobody gave a shit or did anything. There's the guy being as racist as possible. Yep. Making Mississippi look good. Now, this... Making Mississippi look good. Damn. Um, this is what we're going to close Ugh. with. What? No, I'm just... Oh, that like guy in Mississippi. Was Mississippi. Oh. Well, yeah, there. God damn it. Mississippi. Honest, I was born in Singing about, River Hospital. If you were honest about in Mississippi. You were honest about wanting to build community. You'd be focusing Very on safe. divestment, but you're not because you're full of fucking this shit. This woman. Oof. If you cared about student safety, you would have denounced. All right, wait. This is at at Thursday's Rutgers Board of Governors meeting. Rutgers students outlined the hypocrisy of the administration cherishing the community as it sits atop a $2 billion endowment fund invested in Israel while leaving its own community to, to despair. As the speaker stated, dignity for yourself and nothing else. Man, this is five minutes I want everybody to see because this was fucking fire. I sent this to Tara. I sent this to a bunch of people. Like, you guys got to see this. This is wow. To build community, you'd be focusing on divestment, but you're not because you're full of fucking shit. If you cared about student safety, yeah, you would have yeah, denounced yeah. Israel's genocide of Palestinians. The Center for Islamic Life, um, Rutgers University, the Silru, that attack, that hate crime, never would have happened if you hadn't emboldened Zionists by not speaking out against genocide and calling it for what it is. You emboldened genocide, you emboldened racists, you emboldened Zionists, and you endanger students. You don't get to play uninvolved and and dumb and useless and shocked when acts of hate hate happens at Rutgers and then also hold all this power if you can't do your job step the fuck down board of governors you shouldn't be governing shit. the board of trustees okay. shouldn't be entrusted with shit the president shouldn't be presiding over shit you shouldn't be in charge of anything you don't deserve to hold the power that you do because you're abusing it the position that you hold shouldn't even exist you should be controlling the endowment. We should be. You motherfuckers in suits. You're all psychopaths. And you're actively manufacturing a shitty fucking world for us all. You laughing? You think it's funny? I don't know how you live with yourself, honestly. I see you. You hold dignity for yourself and no one else. Do you feel that? Do you? Fuck your norms. Fuck your notions of decorum with your glasses of water 
all sitting around the room. You didn't even hold space for us to come in. There's dignity for yourself and no one else. No dignity for Palestinians. No dignity for the students who are ignored and endangered. No dignity for faculty when you threaten them with firing if they speak out against the obvious. There's no dignity for the homeless of New Brunswick, Newark, and Camden that Rutgers gentrifies. Rutgers is the biggest landlord in all these cities and raises the housing prices of these cities. And then all the other landlords raise their prices. And then the locals end up homeless and displaced. And then the board of governors sits in this room with your suits and your glasses of water and your dignity. Dignity for no one else. Rutgers actively displaces both the people of Palestine through our endowment and the people of New Brunswick, Newark, and Camden. And you want to talk about building community? You're full of fucking shit. Fuck your notions of respectability. You're not respectable people. I have no respect for you. Fuck your social norms. Your ideas of what is normal is what got us into this mess in the first fucking place where we're invested in genocide. You think it's normal and acceptable to be funding and profiting off of genocide. This problem was brought to you all years ago by the Endowment Justice Collective and it was shot down. And now here we are and it's so much worse. More are dead because you ignored it before and you're still not acting. Every day that goes by, Israel murders more Palestinians in the most undignified of ways that I can't even describe how they're doing it because I'm gonna throw the fuck up. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, or if you're actually tapped in, or if you're watching mainstream media. I don't, I don't understand what's going on through your guys' heads. Genuinely, I don't get it. You shouldn't be able to decide for the rest of us what is normal. You made us do all this work of drafting a 56 page fucking document, formally arguing that investing in human rights violations goes against university mission and policy. Why the fuck do we even have to do that? Why did we have to formally argue? Why are there no ethical standards for investment in the first place? There's only standards for divestment. You structured this so that we would have to argue with you and fight with you tooth and nail to get shit divested when we shouldn't even be invested in the first fucking place. And there's only a vague standard for investment is that the investment has to follow Rutgers mission. So I'm gonna ask you about Rutgers mission. Is it in line with Rutgers mission to intentionally target civilian infrastructure, to force people to eat grass, to use tents as sanitary pads, to have C-sections with no anesthesia, and no antiseptic. Love her. And then, and then we're collaborating with Tel Aviv University for a Helix Hub in the name of progress and innovation and medicine. But how do you not see the hypocrisy in that? Are you actually hearing me, Holloway? Can you can you respond if you're hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Why do we have to convince you that this shit is unacceptable? We do all this work, all these people coming together outside and you're ignoring. This should be a task that you drop everything for. You shouldn't be focusing on anything else. All three campuses in New Brunswick, Newark and Camden voted overwhelmingly to divest. You have a moral obligation both to us, the students and to Palestinians whose blood is on all of your hands, divest now. If you were honest about wanting to build community, you'd be focusing. Dude. Just that shit gives me hope. People Ooh. like that. Ooh. Inject that shit into my veins. <clears throat> People like that give me hope. Uh, and they'll look to get her thrown out of school pretty, for that. Watch. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. They'll look to throw her out of school for that. For speaking out. For actually oh, yeah. being disrespectful to to the president of the university in a public hearing. You know what? Right to jail, right away. As a former Rutgers student, and my wife is a former Rutgers graduate, bravo, fucking bravo, man. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. All right. I didn't do too much pitching, but subsec, IndieMediaToday.com. Check it out. Hey, that's a stream alert for Coming tonight's to show. Substack newsletter near you. That is correct. You get some INN stuff that I share over. You get all the clips that I share out from this show each day, and I cut them up 
Sometimes I even edit them down even further, like the like the Hamilton Nolan one, down to an 11 minute clip. But there's so much more over there. <clears throat> I write original articles. We've got all the guest appearances, like when I was on with Beauty and the Boomer with with Reef and Necessary Illusions podcast. Articles about tech tips. Wow, that was loud. Um, and then so Sorry. it's been a while since I shared some other. <laughs> <laughs> some other uh, <laughs> uh some other articles some other stuff across across here but you, there's tons of stuff check out anymediatoday.com um all right huh. uh and while while you're at it that little qr code is to hook jesse jet up with a new computer we are at 50 percent qr code is down in the corner by reef right now i'm gonna put up here are all the people yep. that have donated uh, we got ten dollars tonight from Adam Ayers already. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Love you for donating. Uh, my channel actually has super chats enabled, uh, but also Cash App, Rumble, Substack, subscribe everywhere. Support independent media. We need it more than ever. I love you all. Good night, fam. Good night, fam. Mwah. Ciao, baby. Mm -hmm.